Good evening listeners. Welcome to the program of English Talks. Recently, the Reserve Bank of India has announced the latest monetary policy. Today, let us understand the broad picture of monetary policy and the aspects around it. We have with us the former executive director of Punjab and Sindh Bank, Dr. Farid Ahmed in our studios. A very good evening, sir. Very good evening. sir you have vast experience in the field of economy the term monetary policy how do you describe it broadly see monetary policy it is very crucial for any country or any financial or economy in every country central bank of respective countries will formulate and announce the monetary policies in our country our central bank reserve bank of india is entrusted with the responsibility of the monetary policy the main objective of the monetary policy is the price stability while keeping in mind the growth of economy economic growth economic growth so this economic growth or price stability the reserve bank of india will achieve by regulating the money supply and the rate of interest whenever reserve bank of india feels that the money supply is a short in the economy to meet the requirements or the demands of various sectors it will in a systematic way infuse the money supply so as to enable its availability to all the sectors so the growth of the economy will take place but whenever it feels there is a inflation it will increases the rate of interest so that the banks will take more less loans in turn regular public also will not take loans or they will defer the loans in view of the higher interest so the money supply will come down and the inflation will be controlled in fact in 2016 the reserve bank of india act was amended and the reserve bank was entrusted with the responsibility of inflation targeting so the inflation targeting what does it mean is the reserve bank of india is under obligation to maintain the inflation at 4% as directed by the government of india so this inflation target was given in 2016 for a 5 years period from 16 to 21 again in 21 it was given for another 5 years up to 26 but there is a flexibility 2% plus or minus the reserve bank of india can maintain the inflation that means the inflation can range from the 2% to 6% so while maintaining the price stability or the inflation control within this range reserve bank of india will strive to improve the growth of the economy these are the main objectives of the monetary policy through the monetary policy the reserve bank of india also takes care of the purchase and sale of the securities and bonds and it also manages the forex reserves and also whenever there is a rupee depreciating or appreciating up to certain extent reserve bank of india will not interfere beyond that reserve bank of india will interfere and try to stabilize the rupee without going beyond certain weakening or appreciation further through this monetary policies the reserve bank of india also announces certain new facilities to the customers either in payments or otherwise and also other regulatory actions also it will announce through this monetary policy in fact this monetary policy for in a year are sufficient but generally for every two months this monetary policy is being reviewed and announced by the reserve bank of india in fact this monetary policy is not the policy of the reserve bank of india management it is the policy decided by a monetary policy committee which consists of six members governor of reserve bank of india one of the deputy governors and one ex officio member of reserve bank of india and the three independent members appointed by the government of india okay so the majority the decision of the stance or anything it should be the majority of the committee members decision will be prevail okay so by regulating the money supply and also rate of interest the reserve bank of india will achieve its objectives 
okay rate of interest is the interest at which the loans are available in the economy at which the loans are the funds will be available to the economy and as we go further sir how the reserve bank of india puts the policy into practice so the reserve bank of india will have certain tools and approaches at its disposal in fact the monetary policy we can define in that way also it is a different approaches tools which are available at the reserve bank of india to improve the growth rate of the economy at the same time for maintaining the price stability so when you come to the uh, tools available with the reserve bank of india there are quantitative tools and the qualitative tools particularly when coming to the quantitative tools there are policy rates which are called uh, repo rate reverse repo rate standing deposit facility then um, marginal standing facility bank rate then statutory reserve ratios crr and slr and open market operations as far as the open market operations are concerned as i said the one of the functions of the reserve bank of india is purchase and sale of the securities the open market operations uh, through that purchase and sale of securities will be undertaken as far as statutory reserves are concerned crr cash reserve ratio that is supposed to be 4.5% and the statutory reserve ratio 18% it means that if any bank mobilizing some 100 crores of deposits they cannot give 100 crores for advances as loans as loans they have to put 4.5% as crr with the reserve bank of india in the form of cash then 18% they have to keep in the form of government securities bonds cash gold so identified securities so they are available with only 78% of the deposits mobilized to give the loan so this 22% of the net demand liabilities will be blocked in crr or slr remaining 22 or 22.5% remaining amount will be available for a lending to the different sectors coming to the repo rate reverse repo rate repo rate is whenever there is a shortage in the funds with the banks they will pledge or sell the securities available with them to reserve bank of india with a clear understanding that at a future date at a specific date the securities will be re- again resold to the banks at agreed amount okay so that is why it is called the repurchase agreement the rate of interest charged for this is repo rate it is something like a mortgage yes suppose people whenever they are not having money they will go to the bank they will pledge gold they will pledge property and they will take the loan like that banks also will go because as for slr purpose and also for investment purpose banks will invest in the securities okay. so those securities they will uh, sell with a specific understanding that it will be resold to the banks under repo okay reverse repo is whenever the banks are in having the liquidity liquid funds they will deposit with the reserve bank of india and reserve bank of india will issue the securities with the same understanding that at a future date the banks will resell to the reserve bank generally of there is a 1% difference in repo and reverse repo rates no it is only 25 basis points 25 basis points it is to be 25 or 50 or 1% earlier it is to be there but frankly speaking now the reverse repo has become a non functional okay it has been suspended i can say it has not been eliminated from the reserve bank of india tools it is not practiced it it is not being used okay so in the place of the um, reverse repo rates actually today reverse repo rate is 3.35% whereas the repo rate is 6.5% okay however because the wide gap is there because it is not being used so in the place of reverse repo standing deposit facility was introduced okay in the reverse repo rate or repo rate they are dealing with the securities whereas in the sdf facility the reserve bank of india will accept the deposit but it will not give any security okay so it is collateral free that's why it will give more interest as compared to reverse repo rate this standing deposit facility has become more practical so whenever the banks are having money they will go for what is deposit. its uh, current rate sir it is 0.25% less than the repo rate okay so today its rate is 6.25 the fourth one is the marginal standing facility whenever there are securities 
sufficient securities over and above. As I said, SLR is 18%. Suppose 100 crore deposits are there with the banks, 18 crores they have to keep in the SLR. But they have invested 25 crores. So the 7,000 crores are more against which they can take a repo. Okay. But they have exhausted 7,000 crores, they don't have any surplus. Then within this statutory liquidity ratio, whatever the securities are there, up to 2% they can sell to the Reserve Bank of India, can avail funds or the loans under marginal standing facility scheme. Okay. Because they are using the securities under SLR, the rate of interest will be charged more. That rate of interest is 6.75. Okay. Bank rate also 6.75. That is also whenever the banks are utilizing the funds from the Reserve Bank of India by discounting the bills and all, it will be charged at 6.75. So all these rates and tools are there to ensure the stability of banks? Actually, these rates are used for making the money supply. Okay. Interest rates, how to, regulating these rates, policy rates, it will have impact on the rate of interest being charged by the banks and also the rate of interest prevailing in the overall economy. So, if the rate of interests are being lowered or reduced, money supply will increase. How? The banks will take more and more loans from RBI. In turn, they will give more and more loans to the public. Public will put this money into different purposes, so money supply will increase, so economy will grow. When the rates are increased, banks will not take more amount from the RBI and the general public will not avail more loans and use and put into the economy. So money supply will come down, thereby inflation will be controlled. Okay. So this rate of, rates of interest will play a very important role in regulating the party supply and also GDP growth and also in curtailing the inflation. inflation. And recently, the Reserve Bank of India's Governor Sri Shaktikanta Das has announced the monetary policy. In the monetary policy that is announced, what are the major takeaways from the policy, sir? See, whenever the monetary policy is being announced, it is based upon, it is generally the committee. It discusses for uh, about uh, three days and the third day the policy will be announced. Before announcing the policy, they will take into consideration the global economy, country's macro economy and other all factors based upon that they will announce whatever the decisions taken in the, that monetary policy committee meeting. So on behalf of the committee, Reserve Bank of India governor will announce the policy. Mainly when they made the estimates, the positive things which they have uh, announced are about the GDP. In fact, the GDP growth earlier estimated was around 6.8. That was now announced as 7% for financial year 2022-23. And the financial year 23-24, it is announced as a 6.4%. And inflation, it was downwardly revised and it is estimated to be about 6.5% for 22-23. And for 23-24, it is estimated as... 5.3%. These are the two factors which, based upon that, they will take the policy measures. So, accordingly, the repo rate was increased by 25 basis points from 6.25 to it was increased to 6.5. Since May 2022, this is the sixth time they have increased the repo rate. And totally about 250 basis points have been increased. Automatically, when repo rate is increased, the standing deposit facility rate and also the marginal standing facility rates will be readjusted. So the standing deposit rate is about 6.25. Marginal standing facility rate is 6.75. And the reverse repo rate is kept at 3.35. Bank rate is also it is 6.75 percent. Okay, sir. Uh, you were saying that GDP was estimated at a higher level and inflation is estimated at a lower level. On what basis the RBI estimates the levels of GDP and inflation? Either the GDP or inflation will be based upon both the 
ಡೊಮೆಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕಲ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಫರ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಜಿ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಟಿಸ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಫೀಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಜಿ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಫಾರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ರೀಸನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಡಿಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅರ್ಬನ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ದ ರೂರಲ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಡಿಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಖರೀಫ್ ಕ್ರಾಪ್ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಂಡೀಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಎಕರೇಜ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಎಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಇನ್ ರಬಿ ಸೀಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಹೋಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಗುಡ್ ಕ್ರಾಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರಬಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಪ್ವರ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವರ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ದ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೈ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲೆಂಡರ್ ಇಯರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ನವಂಬರ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಬರ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಬಿಲೋ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ದ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಟಾರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅಕ್ ನವಂಬರ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಬರ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಜಾನ್ವರಿ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಟಾರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಗಿವೆನ್ ಮೇನ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫುಡ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ವೆಜಿಟೇಬಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮಚ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ದೇರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಯಿಲ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೈಸಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಏರ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೈ ನೌ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡೌನ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆನ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಎ ಹೈಯರ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಎ ಲೋಯರ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎನಿ ಎಕನಮಿ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಡಿಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರೋಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಎಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೈ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಡಿಮ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಗ್ಲೋಬಲ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಅನ್ಸರ್ಟಿನಿಟೀಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋಬಲ್ ಜಿಯೋ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫ್ಲಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ರಷ್ಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯುಕ್ರೇನ್ ವಾರ್ ಎಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಗ್ಲೋಬಲ್ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಚೈನ್ ಅನ್ಸರ್ಟಿನಿಟೀಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಇಂಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ when there were a sanctions by america and other countries on russia there was a increase in the prices of the imports particularly crude oil and other imports so the cost of imports has increased in india and automatically that was reflected in the increase in the prices even though governor or the mpc has of the opinion that growth will increase gdp inflation will be reduced in view of the good crop good supply of the crops and also the deflation of the vegetables it is again subject to global uncertainties and global financial uncertainties and uh, geopolitical conflicts because our inflation
uncertainties okay sir thank you in the year 2022 there is a lot of buzz about indian forex reserves uh, what is your opinion about the status of the indian forex reserve in fact uh, indian forex reserves play a very important role and every country requires uh, to maintain the forex reserves to meet the foreign currency payments from time to time india has achieved a highest figure of about 643 billion dollars in september uh 22 or approximately but in a little much earlier itself but there was a reduction of about 100 billion dollars so when and it was a continuous gradual reduction so there was a buzz about whether forex reserves are sufficient whether they are adequate whether the country will face problem and all. in fact this is the problem which we faced in 1991 our forex reserves position was 5.8 billions it was less than 10 actually the measurement or of adequacy of forex reserves crudely on the basis of the months of uh, imports okay at least uh, we should have 3 months imports or at least 6 months imports equal to. but at that time in 91 we were having only 2 weeks imports equivalent forex reserves with us so we were constrained to pledge the gold and manage the situation at that time and uh, subsequently lot of economic reforms have been taken place and it it has continuously though ups and downs were there subsequently it has added to the forex reserves and we have reached to a good position in last year yes. but subsequently again it has come down by 100 billion dollars the reasons for coming down is a one reason is increase in the rates of fed reserve fed reserve is the central agency for fixing the reserve rates united states of america so when they were increasing the rates there was a outflow of funds or the investments done by the foreign institutional investors okay particularly foreign portfolio investments because anybody who will invest in any area with the intention to earn more because indian interest rates are more the foreign investors have come to india and invested but when usa is fed reserve is increasing the rates they thought it is better to invest there second point is another reason to move away from india is indian rupee was depreciated when rupee is depreciating Reserve Bank of India's I when I discussed about the function I told it will maintain the rupee appreciation and depreciation it will leave it to the market forces up to some extent after that Reserve Bank of India will intervene and it will see that the rupee value will not be appreciate or depreciate beyond a limit okay. so when this rupee is depreciating and weakening against US dollar the Reserve Bank of India played a very active role in maintaining the rupee value by infusing the or by using the lot of forex reserves maybe around 50 to 60 billion dollars okay that is the reason why it has come down another another one, one more very important reason is when india maintains forex reserves it will not maintain forex reserves in dollars only okay it will maintain in euros it will maintain in japanese yen and other important currencies all those currencies are also weaken against the us dollars so when they have depreciated its effect has happened on the overall forex reserves of india in terms of dollars okay so because of that there was a decrease in the forex reserves to an extent of 100 to 110 billion dollars however the good thing and positive thing is for the last 3 months again it has taken a upward movement it has gone down to 523 billion dollars almost all 54 billion dollars were added in this 3 to 4 months now the present position is 577 billion dollars it is equivalent to about 9 to 10 months of the imports of the country not only that our external debt 
is in very comfortable position whatever the ad stick if you take today different ad sticks are there to measure the adequacy of the forex reserves gdp external debt to gdp short term debt plus uh, imports for 3 months 100% short term debt and uh, imports for 3 months 80% short term debt and uh, imports for 6 months whatever the criteria you take as of now we are very comfortable with the forex reserves available with the country you are mentioning about the rupee sliding against the dollar the rupee is depreciating against a dollar or appreciating against a dollar how does that happen and what does it mean exactly appreciation means suppose you have 160 rupees one year back you came here with 200 rupees somebody from foreign came and he wants to enjoy here in india for about a weeks period so he came with 1000 rupees equivalent or 1000 dollars he brought it he got each dollar 75 rupees so 75000 he got it now he is coming with 1000 dollars he is getting 80000 rupees okay because dollar appreciated he is getting more money here in a reverse way today he is getting 80000 after 6 months he will come with 1000 dollars and here he he will convert into rupee he will get 72000 rupees because dollar against rupee depreciated rupee strengthened it will have impact on the imports and exports also okay suppose dollar value is increased we have exported to the united states of america some goods we are receiving in the dollar so earlier i used to receive 1000 dollars i used to convert into rupees i used to get 75000 rupees now i get the 80000 rupees okay whereas imports will increase suppose i am getting a imports equivalent to 2000 dollars earlier i used to pay 75000 to my bank and bank used to remit to the foreign exporter for 1000 dollars now i have to pay 80000 rupees so imports will be affected though exports are being benefited sometimes exports all exports may not get benefited because certain exports for manufacturing those goods to be exported they have to import the raw materials or key components okay then the cost of import of the raw material or key components will increase and automatically the exports also will become not lucrative so the appreciation and depreciation of rupee will impact like that okay it may have a positive and negative both in the case of appreciation and depreciation ah both thank you very much sir and you have thrown light on key aspects of monetary policy repo rate how rupee appreciates or depreciates against a dollar it is a pleasure discussing with you dr farid garu thank you so much for visiting the ar studios thank you thank you very much